Hey everyone, my name is Patrick Grady, and two days ago, on June 18th, Kempton and I attempted a 1,000K national record. So our goal was to start down here, near Truckee, California, and end up around here, which is near Helena. That's either, uh, well, it's near the Montana-Idaho border. So yeah, our goal was this 1,000 kilometers straight out. The current U.S. national record is about 700K and was done from Minnesota going south. And so we were hoping to beat that. And our ambitious goal was actually to continue this further to about 1,150 kilometers and end up in uh, Great Falls, Montana. And that would set both the declared straight out record and the free distance record. Um, instead of doing a text write up, I thought I'd try a video write up because that's a little more fun and I can explain the decision making process that we went through and I think show a more uh, interactive, yeah, show, show the flight a little bit more in interactively. So we flew this aircraft, which is Phoenix. It's a 27 meter ASH 25. So I was the co pilot in the front seat and Kempton was the pilot in command in the back seat. So what enabled this flight was an interesting weather setup. So I'm not too much of a weather person, but fortunately Kempton is. But I guess there's a cutoff low here, which is causing great weather in approximately this line and is importantly giving us a 15 knot tailwind. So that helps push us along and uh, generally allows these straight out flights. Of course, the straight out flight is difficult because there's a mammoth retrieval on the other end. If we had made it all the way, this would have been two days going out to get us and then two days coming back. So that's a long way. It's a lot of effort, but you gotta do, uh, gotta be ambitious and try fun things. Uh, one of the interesting things we did is, so this is Williams down here, and the standard thing to do is to tow to the Mendocino Mountains out here. Instead, what we did is we towed to the Sierra Mountains the other way. So this is actually an hour long tow. And what going to the Sierras let us do is it let us avoid this area to the north. So if we had gone to the Mendocino, we would have had to cut around and cut around here. And this area was forecast to be very weak. And actually uh, a very experienced pilot landed out here, uh, let, well, could not make it through this area the other day. And so that kind of backed us, back to our conclusion that we should tow to where the good weather was gonna be. So we can you know, go fast, maintain a high average speed and make it all the way before the uh, day dies on us. So yeah, as you can clearly see, we did not make it, we did not succeed, but we had a good time trying and we ended up making it, I think about 700 kilometers or 650 to around Boise, Idaho and uh, landed in the airport there. So I can uh, show you guys a 3D visualization, which I think will make it a little more fun. So here we are towing out of Williams. Again, we're taking this really long tow going north of the Southern Buttes and Around here is Beale Air Force Base where they fly the U-2 and the Global Hawk. So there's a big TFR around there. So we had to tow north around it. Here we are curving south around the TFR. So our start point is in the mountains over here, north of Truckee, or uh, west of Truckee. And we're towing it around 10,000 feet. We have to do this very circuitous tow due to buildup and overdevelopment in the area. Um, so cloud base is actually, we're 10,000 feet. Cloud base is, starts out quite low, like 2,000 feet. Uh, in the plains and is slowly rising higher. So we're dodging dodging clouds a little bit. And again, yeah, we're above cloud base. And so we get around here and we release. So that's our circle after release. And our start point was, I think, one of these mountains here uh, on, on top of the ridge. So we work our way towards that. And this is actually uh, quite scary for me. So. I, I will say this is the, the most scared I've ever been in an airplane. So as you can see, over this ridge lies Truckee, which is a beautiful airport, and safety. But we cannot clear that ridge right now. We are too low. And looking back here, this is our out. So you can see there's a gap down there, and there's a, a lake down here with a dam, but I don't really know where that leads. And so this flying over this ridge, and then there's a, a big canyon that leads back down to the to the flatland. But that is our out. And if we make it down that out, you know, I think the day is ruined uh, because we won't be able to get back up. So we have to connect with this thermal. But we also don't want to wait too long because, again, you can see we have to make it down that gap. And if we don't, things are going to be real bad. So 
we're trying to work this thermal. Again, it's very overdeveloped, so there are lots of clouds. The clouds don't tell the truth. You know, only one out of three of them is working. But fortunately, we do make it. We do make it up, and so we cross the start point, and now we're heading out over towards Truckee. Um, it's uh, quite overdeveloped, so I think probably 70% of the ground is covered in shade. Um, we can look down and we can see uh, we can see lots of gliders on the ramp at Truckee Airport. Only one glider is in the air at the time, and we see him over here in a thermal, and so we head out to, uh, to join him and to team fly with him. And so now we're heading out into the desert. This is the first time I've been in this area, but it's, it's really cool. The clouds are all working. There are tons of clouds. They all work great. There's like seven knots, seven knots under each of them. And so we're doing great, going fast. Uh, team flying with a 18 meter fully ballasted ship. So he's actually a little bit faster than us in these very strong conditions. But because we can see where he's thermaling, we can uh, keep up with him. So yeah, this is the first time I've soared over the desert and it was uh, rather alarming to me. I guess you can sort of see from these satellite images, there is nothing out here. If you had to land in one of these valleys, there's like not a person in 50 miles. And you know, it's dry, it's hot, and uh, <laughs> they might find your desiccated corpse three months later. Or at least that's my impression being a Georgia pilot where there are tons of farms everywhere and tons of people. So uh, Georgia on the other hand is very safe. Like the conditions are weaker, but you can land out about pretty much anywhere and you'll, you'll be fine. So we're going fast, taking good lift. Um, I think during this part of the task, we had, for the first about three hours, we had a task speed of about 70 knots, which is good and was on target for us to complete our task by the end of the day. Um, the cloud bases aren't terribly high, so they're forecast to be, I think, about 14,000 in this area. We were only at 12,000. So it's a little bit lower margin than we would have liked, but it is what it is and the clouds are working. We do get a little lower than would have been ideal, but nothing terrible. And as we start working our way along, so again, we're going towards Boise, Idaho, we notice that uh, there's a little bit of overdevelopment and there's a bit of rain in Virga, so we have to dodge that, which is a little bit slow, but again, nothing terrible. So we're working our way along, and then the next challenge is to cross the Boise Valley. So let me explain this. So up here, you can see this ridge, and way in the distance, you can see the other ridge. And in between those is the Boise Valley. Um, so obviously, there's the city of Boise there, but it's also wet and developed. And so there is forecast to be not much lift or not at all lift. And so what we have to do is we have to gain as much altitude on this side so we can safely make it across. That's going to be a little bit difficult. So here we are trying to get up to cloud base, get as much altitude as possible. And then it's like a 30, 40 mile glide to the other side. There's also a Boise International, so I'm talking on approach to them so they know where we are. And here we are doing our mammoth glide to the other side. And what's difficult is we didn't quite make it with enough altitude to clear these ridges. So that this way is forward to our task. As you can see, we're just below ridgetop height. And there are lots of airports in the Boise area because it's you know well-developed, well-populated. But over this ridge, there's really not much. So we need to gain altitude. But here we are scratching around. We're getting getting low and wasting a lot of time, which you know puts the task in jeopardy, puts finishing before the day dies in jeopardy. Um, but we're struggling. And we get back up to cloud base. But then we realize there's another problem. So these mountains over here are about 8,000 feet high, but cloud base is 10,000, when it was forecast to be 16,000. So we only have a 2,000 foot margin over these mountains, and that's just not going to work. Like, you need to take every thermal to safely clear the mountains, and crossing, you know, a big valley would be tough. And it's, it's just not going to work. You know, we already wasted a lot of time scratching around here, and at this point, we, we make the call to abandon the task. It's, uh, we don't think we can make it, and then you know, going into these mountains, no man's land and low base is just a bad idea. So we decide instead, you know, we're working around trying to figure out what to do. Uh, Kempton is flying and I'm, you know, <laughs> reading the weather, looking at the airports, looking at a safe place to go. And we decide to go north. This is a uh, northwest towards the Columbia Basin. Um, there is a kind of a, a highway going this way and there are airports every 30, 40 miles along this highway. So we're working our way along, but the day is sort of dying. I think it's around 
5 p.m. at this point. And, you know, the thermals are getting a little weak. And as we're getting towards, you know, the more developed wet area, they're a little bit weaker. And so actually at this point we make the call, okay, we're not going to go up this way. We're not going to follow the river. We're just going to stay near Boise because that makes the retrieve shorter. And it's also safe because there's tons of airports down here. So we decide to add some distance in the valley. You can see that a lot of these thermals are pretty weak and we're kind of uh, scratching around. Um, so yeah, this is the end of the day. It's, it's quite weak. We've gotten a little bit low, but there's good airports here. So it's not, not too worrying. And we decide, okay, let's, let's just call it a day and come back, land at Ontario, Ontario, Oregon. Uh, it's actually kind of funny. We, uh, <laughs> on final glide here, we had the airport nicely made and I was actually on the phone reserving a hotel and <laughs> figuring out where we were going to go after the airport. But this is a nice airport, big wide runway, works well to 27 meter wings. And uh, there's actually, on the sectional, there's a glider port here. We only saw one tied down, like HP-18, that looked like it hadn't been flown in 10 years. But nice airport and a safe ending to the day. We ended up driving back the next day. So Drew drove the truck and trailer to meet us here. And we all drove back the next day, which was fun. And, you know, it's cool to see uh, the area that you flew over uh, driving. Um, and it was, you know, fun talking and seeing all the terrain. But that's about it. Hope you enjoyed it.